Before we get to the video, I quickly want to mention that this video is sponsored by Hockey World. Since October is near and hockey season is almost here, Hockey World has tons of gear to get you ready for it. One special that is running currently is that you can get $20 off your purchase when you spend $100 or more with the promo code MOREHOCKEY2. So if you want to support me and get geared up, simply click down below or the link provided in the corner here to get started. And now on to the video. The NHL locker room, the place where players bond and pick each other back up when need be. However, ironically within these walls is where over the years, some of the most controversial incidents have happened between teammates especially. In this video, we're going to go over some of the most dramatic disputes that have taken place close to or within locker rooms themselves. And with that, here are four of the worst NHL locker room incidents to date that have been made public information. Back in the early 1990s, the Quebec Nordiques had secured a player who they thought would be a game changer for the franchise. However, after electing not to play for Quebec and going down to the OHL instead, Eric Lindros was traded to the Philadelphia Flyers thereafter. Even though he was a star player, Lindros was known to hold his own. A power forward by nature at 6'4 and well over 200 pounds, Lindros had a unique skill set. It wouldn't be long though before Lindros wasn't the only young star in town. After playing a couple seasons with the St. Louis Blues, Rod Brendamore also found himself being dealt to Philly. Therefore, since they were both highly skilled players, Brendamore and Lindros seemed to always be within close proximity of one another. Despite this though, they obviously weren't close enough because even though they were teammates, the relationship didn't prevent Lindros from getting a little too cozy with Brenda Moore's wife. After they married in 1996, Rod and his wife Kelly had three kids together and were nicely settled in by the end of the 20th century. Unfortunately though, Kelly decided to have an affair with Lindros on his side until the secret finally came out. Even though we're going on articles from reputable sources only, there's just been speculation regarding what exactly happened. According to an article which I'll link below from Barstool Sports, it was pretty much common knowledge that Brenda Moore's wife was indeed having an affair with Lindros. However, what has been a pretty well circulated rumor is that upon finding out the betrayal, Rod the Bod followed his teammate into the locker room and proceeded to hit him with a chair that was nearby. Also according to the article, the story continues with Lindros being thereby concussed following the altercation. Brenda Moore then immediately marched to the GM, at the time Bobby Clark, and gave him an ultimatum. Either he was going to be traded or Lindros was. While it is hard to verify every little detail, it seems like there has to be a grain of truth in this somewhere. Especially since Brenda Moore was indeed traded mid-season to the Carolina Hurricanes. At the start of a regular season game in Vancouver, things quickly took a dramatic turn early on. After Flames coach at the time, Bob Hartley, decided to start his fourth line for the puck drop, John Tortorella then countered and had defenseman Kevin Bieksa take the draw. And as expected, following the game's commencement, the two Pacific teams immediately dropped the gloves. Following a slew of misconducts being handed out to both sides, Upon intermission, Tortorella then took it upon himself to settle the score and sought out Hartley in the locker room hallway. Thankfully though, Flames forward Brian McGratton was able to restrain Torts for the most part. However, according to an article from ESPN that I'll reference below, Flames goaltending coach at the time came out of the Flames dressing room to confront the head coach, but was also stopped by McGratton as well. After the game concluded, it was later announced that both Hartley and Tortorella would be facing discipline in regards to their actions. Firstly, Hartley was given a $25,000 fine since his actions did have a hand in the events that unfolded, coming to fruition. Secondly, Tortorella was given a steeper punishment and was suspended for 15 days. The suspension itself turned out to require an absence from six regular season games and obviously a pay cut as well. Most of us by now know that Evander Kane and Winnipeg simply didn't mix. 
On one hand, you had Cain, who wanted to show personality and be individualistic, and on the other, established rules along with an unspoken hockey code to follow. In retrospect, it's hard to know how Cain in his younger days would have been received in a more fringe style of market, such as Arizona or Florida. Even still, what we do know is that after Cain violated one of the established team rules, it didn't go over well, especially with Dustin Bufflin. Apparently, after Kane decided to violate team dress code and show up to a team meeting in a tracksuit instead of a traditional one, Bufflin became enraged. And in order to teach his teammate a lesson, the defenseman just hours before a regular season game starting threw Kane's attire into the showers. Due to the complacency on Kane's end to disregard the rules, according to the Winnipeg Free Press, Kane was scratched from the game against the Vancouver Canucks that was set to commence thereafter. It wasn't long after this dramatic turn of events unfolded that Kane found himself being traded to Buffalo mid-season in 2015. This is another locker room rift that definitely happened to some extent, but the details are a little murky. Even still, what we do know is that Dion Phaneuf was drafted by the Calgary Flames in 2003 and then made his rookie debut at the start of the 2005-2006 season. By then, there was an established leadership group already, including Robin Regeer and Captain Jerome McGinla, and one that would be tested. Around a year after he made the cover of EA's NHL 2009 video game, Phaneuf was at the heart of some internal issues unfolding in the Flames locker room. As Phaneuf was apparently butting heads with veteran Robin Regeer, and in mid-season of 2010, it was announced that Phaneuf was being dealt to the Toronto Maple Leafs. This led to the suspicion that there was indeed friction playing out behind the scenes. GM at the time, Daryl Sutter, did admit a few months later that there had been locker room issues throughout the 2009-2010 campaign in Calgary. Mike Keenan, a couple years later, also corroborated that Phaneuf and Regeer were a According to him, fighting in the locker room. Keenan, who was the head coach from 2007 to 2009, recalled witnessing the dysfunction, which apparently was evident prior to the season in which Phaneuf was traded. Sportsnet's Dan Murphy also said, Something was clearly wrong in the mix in Calgary. Everyone knows that Phaneuf and Robin Regeer did not get along very well off the ice and weren't a great pair on it, he says. Even though it wasn't documented by any reliable sources, the consensus also was that Phaneuf and Aginla didn't care for each other either. Interestingly, the two nearly dropped the gloves in Toronto following the Phaneuf trade. 